Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today, a history lesson in some sense. Obviously, I'm not an historian, I have no idea about history, but I would like to tell you about the Poincaré conjecture and kind of go into some details uh, where it comes from, where it came from, and where it's supposed to go eventually. I hope so, at least. Um, because eventually, I would like to well show you a proof of this conjecture. Um, first, proof in huge quotation marks. So in a YouTube video, you should be careful uh, what you call a proof, uh, what you try to prove. It's really more like a sketch of a proof. And also, I will prove it in even bigger quotation marks because I'm certainly not going into the uh, details of the proof for the 3D one, which is probably the most important one, um, or maybe the 4D one. But I will go to higher dimensions where it actually gets easier. So there's this fun fact that this conjecture is actually easier in higher dimensions, although it sounds like this is ridiculously complicated in higher dimensions, but it's actually easier. And essentially the statement of the conjecture is that spheres will be spheres. So if you see a sphere, it is a sphere. That's roughly what it is. But let's do some uh, history and mathematics at the same time. Hope you will enjoy the ride. Okay, so there's a famous, really famous paper, uh, which I just took a photo of, of an online copy uh, from a while ago, <laughs> 1895, by uh, Poincaré. And essentially it was this paper, this one paper was the birth of topology or its old name. So topology was before um, Poincaré called Analysis Zetus. Okay. That was the old name for topology. Whether that's a better name or not is not important, but that's also the name for topology. So this paper essentially is called topology. And what Poincaré does is kind of introduces all the standard notions of traditional topology, if you want. Which is really, really impressive, because obviously there was some work before, which I'm not going to mention by really giants of the field. Euler and the Euler characteristic, Gauss has done a lot on manifolds and braids and all that stuff and Riemann manifolds and so on. And it's really a lot of names and many, many more names, which I'm skipping here. But essentially, well, let's ignore that for a second. Essentially what Poincaré did was we just came up with a brainchild out of the blue and here you go and you have the birth of topology. It was really the kickoff um, was this paper, Analysis Zetus. And essentially, as I said, created all the notions of topology, which we have seen so far in geometric topology and even the ones from algebraic topology, fundamental groups, homology, all that fun stuff, all in some sense due to Poincaré, which is really, really a good way of writing a paper, like super influential. Well, you write a paper and it's just ridiculously influential. Anyway, I guess Poincaré was a genius and also a giant. Um, so here we go. So that's now uh, the starting point of the conjecture, which is in this, uh, or in the follow-ups of those uh, of this paper. There are four follow-ups, so five papers in total. I just have the first one here on my slide. And the point is that Poincaré was thinking about loops in spaces. So here you have three loops, A, B, C, on a torus. And Poincaré was thinking about whether you can shrink loops or not, whether I can shrink loops uh, to be trivial or not. And here you can already see the A loop doesn't shrink, it goes around the whole of the torus, so it always gets stuck at the whole of the torus. Uh, the B loop is even easier to see, doesn't shrink, it goes around uh, the whatever part of the torus, it goes around uh, the swim ring like this, so it clearly doesn't sh shrink. Let me mention here again that the torus is hollow, so it's hollow in between, so you really can't shrink uh, this little loop. And the C loop actually clearly shrinks. It's just it's just on the surface of the the, the torus here, and you just uh, shrink it back to a point. So that's a non-trivial loop, and this is kind of saying that the fundamental group of the space is non-trivial. And what Poincaré observed, I'm not sure whether Poincaré was the first one, but certainly it is in Poincaré, is that any loop on the sphere is actually trivial. And here's a sequence kind of undoing the belt of the sphere, so the equator, and you can just pull it over the North Pole in this case and shrink it to a point. So the fundamental group of S3 um, is trivial. So this is actually a picture of S2, but the same works for S3 and every all of the higher S's anyway. And Poincaré kind of conjectured, well, 
conjecture in quotation marks, I'll say in a second why, that every three manifolds, so the ones we have seen, uh, every closed ones, the ones that we have seen in the previous, whatever how many videos, uh, which has a trivial fundamental group, is actually a sway. So spheres will be spheres. You can detect spheres by just looking at loops in the three manifold. And it was kind of well known for the surfaces. So we have classified surfaces and you can just check as soon as you have a torus, you can put kind of, or any type of torus, you could put one of the non-trivial loops uh, around the torus. So for, for, for two dimensions, this was well known and Paul Carré conjectured it for three dimensions. Or to be more completely precise, um, in the beginning, so I said there were uh, five papers. In the beginning, there was actually no conjecture because Poincaré thought that this is obvious, whatever that means. And later, Poincaré found those homology spheres, um, which are really tricky objects. We had them uh, in one of the videos. And it shows that at least homology is not strong enough to detect the spheres because you have kind of non spheres that have the homology of the sphere. So later, Poincaré reformulated this, but it was ra it's really rather a question. Like, mm, could this be true than a conjecture? It's still known as Poincaré conjecture. It should be called Poincaré's big question, but it's called conjecture. There we go. So Poincaré went from, well, this is obvious to being very, very careful, right? A question is way weaker uh, than a conjecture. Anyway, the conjecture stood for quite a while. Uh, quite, a, quite a while is, is really quite a while. Remember that Poincaré was essentially uh, around this time, maybe plus five years or so, doesn't really matter. And here's again the shrinking process on the torus. Uh, well, on the torus, you can't shrink those two, and on the sphere on the left hand side. And as I said, the existence of homology spheres um, kind of made this way more complicated. And it turned out to be not just a little bit more complicated than a two dimensional case, but something like much, much, much more complicated than the two dimensional case. And it took about, uh, let's say, 100 years. Uh, until there was a proof, and the proof is ex exceptionally brilliant and certainly non-trivial at all. So from obvious to a proof that is just uh, was just a breakthrough uh, about 20 years ago, just ridiculously huge breakthrough um, in uh, mathematics, 100 years later, proved Poincaré's quotation mark conjecture type object. It's really slow. Um, and well, people in, in between, people tried a lot to prove this conjecture. It's not like it took 100 years because nobody cared. That's sometimes also the case. But no, people really tried a lot to prove this conjecture. It was one of the major open conjectures in mathematics altogether, not just in topology. And came up with different versions. It turned out that the different versions, which I would like to uh, kind of prove, again, in quotation marks in one of the follow-up videos, um, is what is called the generalized Poincaré conjecture. And I actually managed here, I, I find a funny typo, I will point out the funny typo. So this one here should be here, as you can see. So <laughs> anyway, so it's a generalized Poincaré conjecture. And well, I tried to prove that. So, and the idea is that any, any homotopy n3 is isomorphic to SN, where you could mean isomorphic as topological manifolds or as smooth manifolds. And homotopy n3 is just a generalization of this idea of the fundamental group. And there are kind of these two flavors. Well, there's even a bit more, but let's focus on the main flavors. You can ask this as a topological object, so just continuous, or you can ask this as a smooth object, which is a much stronger, um, well, a much stronger assumption. And as I said, for n lower than equal to two, we have the classification of surfaces. You just do it. You just can't classify higher dimensional manifolds. Uh, that's why it gets so much more complicated. And the fun thing is that Smail much earlier than, than uh, Perelman uh, proved this generalized Poincaré conjecture, which looks much, much harder because it's higher dimensional, right? We are now in dimension N um, than the three-dimensional one. The proof to topological version uh, using what is called an h cobordism theorem, which I'm going to explain in a, in a later video, and, but proved it for, well, the only case that was missing essentially is the interesting one, but kind of all other dimensions are easier, which is kind of, uh, very, very exciting. And the topological version for n equal 3 then took another 40 years-ish and is based on the proof of Perelman. People always forget uh, earlier work of Hamilton on this. So I call this a Hamilton-Perelman theorem, if you want. The answer of uh, the Poincaré conjecture. 
I would like to draw your attention again on this point that n bigger than three higher dimensions are easier than low dimensions. And I'm trying to, the, the higher dimensions are actually so easy that I could try to explain the proof in a video. It's still, of course, very brilliant. Just me mimicking or explaining a proof or coming up with a proof is just really, really different. And this paper by uh, Smale in the 60s was really, again, a big breakthrough here. So it shows you that the Poincaré conjecture was not just a silly conjecture. The Poincaré question was not just a silly question, but people really worked on this very, very, very hard. Okay, and it turns out, it turns out it gets even worse or better or whatever. F feel free to come to your own conclusion. It turns out that the topological version is ridiculously hard for n plus four and wrong in general. So again, a very famous paper, this time by Milnor, uh, also roughly around in the 60s, showed that the smooth version is wrong for n uh, bigger than seven. And it, it gets pretty ridiculous. So in, in n equals seven, seven dimensions, there are uh, 28 different smooth structures on the sphere and whatever in dimension 19, there are quite a few. So from here onward, it usually fails. Sometimes it doesn't, but it usually fails. Um, the dimension five and six, they work out. The small dimensions actually in this case work out as well. And it was kind of known before. And then there's this mysterious dimension four, the dimension four, where this is still, I mean, widely open. It's wildly open, it's wide. And um, here it just says there's at least one smooth type. That's kind of obvious, it's a standard one, but there might be infinitely many or God knows, actually God knows probably. And it's kind of fun that again, for topological dimension three is very tough and it's a celebrated hamilton Perlman theorem. And for dimension four, it's super tough if you want, and it's a wide open question. And let me just comment here on the widely open. So while uh, the three dimensional case, so everyone believed that it's true. So Poincaré thought it's obvious in the beginning and everyone believed it's true, just the proof took a while. So it's pretty hard to prove. Here in dimension four, you have essentially two groups uh, of experts, some try to prove it, some try to disprove it. That's essentially the status of this conjecture. So I think we are still very, very far away from proving this. Um, maybe history will prove me wrong and we have a proof next week, who knows? But as uh, for the end of 2022, this is still widely open in the sense that the experts are not even uh, sure what the answer should be. Um, I have no idea. I would guess it's true. Ooh, now I made a statement, but obviously I have no way to prove that. Okay, so the Poincaré conjecture, maybe the main conjecture in topology itself, turns out to be hardest in dimension three for the topological version and dimension four for the smooth version, which is kind of a little bit ridiculous. So everything higher dimensional is kind of trivial and I'm going to, well, trivial in huge quotation marks, and I'm going to show you that in well, kind of sketching the proof in a later video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.